What's up guys, N here, and today's for this Deck Tech Thursday, we will be checking out my new version of Mega Broski, aka Mega God of War. Now, as we know, we got a brand new Mega God of War, a brand new shiny Mega God of War, that from the newest set, Steam Siege, and it's been testing around a lot, it's actually really, really powerful, so here is my take on the deck of that, hope you all enjoy it. So first of all, what is a Broski deck without three copies of my main Broski? Now, I have two, two of the Life Leap, one of the Link Blast, but the ratio is really up to you. Personally, I prefer having more of the Life Leap, mainly because it's a single energy attacker, while Link Blast is two energy. Though, on the other hand, Link Blast is 30, and if you had the same amount of energy, and that's 70, so... The base would be 100 with this one, if there was any... If there was the same amount of energy, so it's really up to you guys. If you want to, like, attack quicker and heal a bit of damage, or if you want to put a second energy and do more damage. <clears throat> but... That is completely up to you guys. By the way, I am totally in love with this Secret Rare art. Really wish I could get more of this. All right. And for the Mega Broski lineup, we have two of the Despair Ray and one of the Brilliant Arrow. Now, hybrid version of, the, of this deck are amazing. Just don't overdo it with four Gardevoir EX and two of this and two of that. Don't do it. Because I tried it and it does not work. But 3-2, I find is perfectly, perfectly awesome. And even if you want to go to the old Garvar build with two of this one and one of the Despair Ray, that would be fine too. But in my personal opinion, I think you kind of have to hybrid them in some way. that Because they just work amazing like that now. <clears throat> but let's take a look at a new Despair Ray Garvar. Or as I like to call it, the Cruel Trader Garvar. 210 HP, Fairy and Psychic type, for you, so you guys can see up there. This is a dual type card and has the attack to spare array for 110 and you discard as many Pokemon on your bench as you like and does 10 more for each. So you do not have to discard if you don't want to. That's also something I wish I had known sooner because I thought if you had a bench Pokemon that you had to discard at least one, but you do not. So very, very good there. And also very, very good for the meta coming up because one of the hyped up decks is going to be Mega Mewtwo Y and this just completely annihilates it. So... That's why I run two of those, and one co and I just run one copy of this, mainly because there are going to be like really bulky Pokemon that Mega Gardevoir, the new one, although very good and quick, is not dealing the one hit knockout for those huge bulky Pokemon. So that's why I've got this Gardevoir in here, just to deal with those huge tanks that run around in the meta at times. And next up, I run two copies of Xerneas and two copies of Xerneas Break. Now, Xerneas is just obviously to excel some energy, but Xerneas Break, guys, let me tell you, this card puts in some work. For two Fairy Energy, Lifestream does 20 times the amount of all energy you have in place, so it's like a mini Brilliant Arrow Gardevoir, so that's really, really good. And the fact that it's still just a one prize attacker too, really, really awesome. And, my, and in my opinion, it's probably the best 90x attacker you could have in this deck. Not only do you boost up energy, but take advantage of it with the attack as well. So, very, very powerful brick that we've gotten. Very happy with that. And next up here, I run three copies of the Meta Shiebe. <clears throat> Forgive me. Since we're discarding a lot of Pokemon from our bench, it only makes sense to run a lot of Shaman in the deck to draw as much as we can. And also, two copies of Hoopa EX just to get out all of our EXs quicker. And again, more despair rate bait. So, and we have ways to put them back in the deck and just keep doing it over and over and over again. So, very, very powerful there. And that will do it for my Pokemon lineup. And now we're gonna get into the supporter lineup. Going to run three copies of Professor Sycamore and three copies of N. Now I normally run four copies of Professor Sycamore in my decks. But since we're running three copies of Shaman EX, I felt that having the four Sycamore really was not necessary. And so far through playtesting, I have really only needed three. The missing one Sycamore has never, ever been an issue for me. So, yep, that will do it for the draw supporters. And now for my one-ups, I run one copy of Lysander, one copy of Hex Maniac, and one copy of the new Ninja Boy. Ninja Boy has actually gotten me out of some bad situations where I would start off with a Shaman or Hoopa. You would just play that, then get your deck a Xerneas or a Gardevoir and put it on the bench instead of that and just continue with your plays from there. So, very, very good card. 
Hex Maniac, just for obvious reasons, shut down all abilities until the end of your opponent's next turn. Very, very good, because other than the Shaman and Hoopa, you don't really re rely on abilities as much. And once you bench them all, you're just discarding them from there, so. And Lysander, once again, obvious, just bring out a Pokemon from your opponent's bench. And that will do it for the item count. I mean, for supporters, I don't know why I said items. All right, now we're gonna go into the item count. Going to run four copies of Ultra Ball, very standard. Ultra Ball, get a Hoopa, bench the Hoopa, get everything you need, basically. And just more Despair Ray bait. So, never less than four Ultra Ball in just about any deck, especially this one. And also, four copies of Max Elixir, probably one of the best items for this deck right now. It's basically an item version of Xerneas, almost. Look at the top six cards of your deck, get a basic energy, put it to one of your basic bench, so... Very, very powerful. And for an uncut of item, these things are kind of pricey. They're like, I see these going for between two to four bucks, which doesn't sound like much in general, but for an uncommon item, it kind of is. But the even more expensive uncommon item would be four copies of VS Seeker. Though unfortunately, there is no avoiding these. You need the four copies of VS Seeker, especially now in the rotation that we're losing Battle Compressor to help this card support is easier. Four is definitely an absolute must to get any to get your supporters back into your hand. Really glad we did not lose that. So, next item is going to be three copies of Fairy Drop. Now, Fairy Drop is pretty pretty good in this deck to where anything with a Fairy Energy you can heal off 50 damage from it, and that's kind of the idea I did with my old version of Mega Garvar without the Aromatis. Because that was the main point of the Aromatis, which should use Max Potion to heal off, which is great and all. But that was too much work for not the results you needed. So Fairy Drop gets the done, job done quicker. It's a 210 Mega, so it has high HP as it is. And being able to heal off a high HP Mega is always really, really powerful. Put those aside. Next up, I run three copies of Super Rod. Now, Super Rod is very, very, very important in this deck because say you're going to be discarding your Shamans and Hoopas due to the Despair Ray attack and also because you're going to be losing energy a bit too. You constantly play Super Rods to get these back into the deck just so you can keep using them effects and keep using Mega Gardevoir's Despair Ray over and over and over again. And also, I w uh, the thing is, like, I would almost run four of these super rods, especially now that we lost Sacred Ash, because Sacred Ash would have been an amazing card in this deck. But maybe for the expand, or hopefully Sacred Ash gets reprinted in, in some further sets. But for right now, we have Super Rod to work with, which isn't bad because you can also get your basic energy that you lose as well. So yeah. If you guys would feel more comfortable running forward of Super Rod in this deck, I would say completely go for it. Because I actually almost did myself. So yeah, I, I just think three is fine. But again, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you want to go four, that is also perfectly fine as well. All right. Next up is going to be four copies of Trainer's Mail. Very standard, obvious reasons. Just look at the top four cards of your deck and take out any training you find there except Trainer's Mail and put it into your hand. So very, very good card because we rely on a lot of trainers in this deck to get the jobs done. So Trainer's Mail is an absolute must at four. And for our final item, it's going to be three copies of Gardevoir Spirit Link. Man, I really wish they would have done something different for the Spirit Links and Steam Seeds. Like, at least make, if they get kept the same pose and at least made it shiny, that would have been fine. But look, I look right here. I have the Primal Clash version right here and the Steam Seeds version right here. They are exactly the same. It's like, well, this one's reverse hollow, but that's not the point. So can you believe that, guys? I mean, they couldn't even just color this shiny. It's like, ugh. Why, Pokemon? It's not like you're struggling for money or anything. You could have made a Spirit Link to different art. All right. Now for stadiums, I go one, two, Three copies of Fairy Garden. Now, it is really unfortunate that we lost Dimension Valley because since Garvar is also psychic, that means he would be able to do 
the despair ray for a single fairy energy which is unbelievable but fairy guardian is a very very good card as well because it gives everything you have free retreat with a fairy energy so not really complaining too much about that but i'm just telling you when it comes towards expanded time then there is definitely going to be despair ray dimension valid despair ray gardevoir is running around I guarantee it and last up for my energy counts i run one two three four five six seven eight now not as much as normal mega gardevoir decks but enough to where i'll always have stuff not only for my despair rays but i'm also gonna be hitting for decent damage with my brilliant arrow as well so that will about do it for this deck profile of my main man mega broski so yeah guys like i said i've been testing this deck out and the combination is very very powerful see this guys see this cruel traitor shiny mega broski this is what happens when you make fun of him for wearing a dress he unleashes rares of despair upon you and there is nothing you're gonna do about it i tried warning you guys but did you listen did you listen to me no you did not you made fun of him for wearing the dress and now he's coming after you big time and he's also going to be facing off against Yan Mega Break Deck tomorrow. So let's see how my main man Broski handles against that. Like I said, I've been doing very, very well with this deck so far. So then again, my record's not exactly much to brag about. So we'll just have, you'll just have to stay tuned tomorrow and see who takes the victory in that one. So if you guys like this video, be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe if you are new to the channel and once again stay tuned tomorrow for our battle frontier friday where it's going to be yon mega break versus mega gardevoir you're not going to want to miss it so until next time guys this has been end with the pokemon evolutionaries and you guys have better have learned your lesson don't make fun of broski for wearing dresses he's gonna come after you for that see you guys next time <laughs>